The ban on public gatherings in Ghana has been extended until 31st of May 2020. President Kufuado, who announced this in an address to the nation, encouraged Ghanaians to continue to adhere to safety protocols to curb the spread of coronavirus. We certainly must be doing something right in Ghana. Our country has administered more tests per million people than any other country in Africa. And in fact, the World Health Organization, WHO, has reached out to us to share our sample pooling experience with other African countries so they can adopt this strategy and also ramp up their testing capabilities. It is thus vital that we continue to maintain the measures of enhanced hygiene and social distancing protocols to contain the spread of the virus as they are the surest way to a quick return to a life of normalcy. All stakeholder bodies I have interacted with over the last three weeks in the health, labor, religious, chieftaincy, educational, hospitality, tourism, and creative arts sectors share in this opinion because collectively we believe they are essential for our very survival. These groups are also being engaged on the way forward towards the easing of these restrictions so that our social and economic lives can go back to normal whilst protecting lives at the same time. Soon those engagements will enable us to design a clear roadmap for the easing of restrictions. In my address to workers and the nation on May Day, I announced the extension of the closure of our borders for one more month as the means to continue halting the importation of the virus into our country. The ban on public gatherings, as set out in Executive Instrument No. 64, has been extended also to the end of the month, i.e. 31st May. So during this period, there will continue to be a ban on public gatherings such as the holding of conferences, workshops, parties, nightclubs, drinking spots, beaches, festivals, political rallies, religious activities and sporting events. All educational facilities, private and public, continue to remain closed. There is still a ban on funerals other than private burials conducted with not more than 25 persons. It is noteworthy that the police are arresting and prosecuting persons irrespective of their status in society who flout these regulations. We cannot allow a few persons for their narrow selfish interests to jeopardize the health, well-being and safety of the larger population. Right, so uh, religious uh, gatherings, according to the president, will still remain suspended, at least for now. This follows the president's address extending the ban on social gathering until May 31. Before the address, however, Christian leaders presented modalities and guidelines to mitigate the spread of the coronavirus, paving way for a lifting of the ban on religious programs. The intervention strategy spearheaded by the Christian uh, ecumenical uh, bodies include one, uh, make available hand washing materials for all to wash hands before entering the church or touching rails and doors, etc. Sanitization, that's make sanitizers available, preferably a dispenser available uh, near church entrances, washrooms, etc. Pastors, offices, vestries, among others, to sanitize hands and then social distancing also. So let's quickly get on to uh, Zoom right now. We have the uh, chairman of the Christian Council of Ghana, Reverend Dr. Uh, Cyril Fayose, uh, joining us for uh, some uh, conversation on this. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Thank you very much uh, for your time. The president talks about not allowing uh, people with their selfish interest to draw us back, you know, with the infections, etc. But I know that the church groups have presented very detailed plan or uh, outline of how you are going to help prevent the spread of coronavirus if uh, the ban on uh, churches are lifted, but it hasn't been lifted. Are you disappointed? Yes, I'm here. 
Mm. So I'm asking you whether you are disappointed that at yesterday's national uh, broadcast, the president did not lift the ban on social gathering, including churches. Right, I think we're having uh, some challenges uh, getting a good communication with Reverend Dr. Uh, Cyril Faisal, but we'll be uh, getting to him and re-establishing contact so we can have that conversation. This is still Midday Live from our studios at, at the Sawe Kandai in Accra. If you're watching us, we're streaming live on Facebook, on our Facebook page, and also at 3news.com. Uh, you can also catch us on DSTV Channel 279. Let's see if uh, Reverend Dr. Cyril Fiosi, uh is here to uh, speak with us, unfortunately. Uh, Doc, can you hear me? I can hear you now. I Great. You so we apologize. We lost you earlier. I was saying that the president did not lift the ban on uh, social gatherings, including churches. And this actually is in contrast with the suggestion and outline that church groups have made, you know, to convince everyone that you are prepared to curb the spread of coronavirus. I was asking if you are disappointed with that. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, uh, not in the least. We are not disappointed at all because we were not asking for the lifting of the ban. Mm -hmm. What our um, guidelines uh, meant to do is to prepare our members and educate them on how to operate. What should the ban be lifted? But we were not in any way asking for the ban to be lifted. The decision to lift the ban is entirely that of the government. We believe that they have the technical wherewithal, they have the mm, But But my concern is that if you were not uh, uh, advocating for a lifting of the ban, the guidelines you brought out were actually uh, clear guidelines in the event that uh, bans were lifted. How would you come up with such guidelines if you are telling me, on the other hand, and, that and you were not anticipating um, the ban to be lifted? No, not at all. We did not know whether it would be lifted or not, and that wasn't our expectation. In any case, the government consulted the church leaders, and so the decision that had been reached is in tune with what the church leaders mm. may have whispered to the president. So this is not a surprise at all for us. Right. The ban should be lifted only when the time is right, when COVID-19 is under control, uh, we can operate freely. But COVID-19 has changed the world, it has turned the world upside down. So no matter what happens, church will not be the same. We have to put in some measures so that we do not have uh, relapses. And uh, I know that irrespective of the fact that you are telling us you're not disappointed, there are comments coming from uh, individual members of the clergy that suggest that the lack of assembling of Christians and church members is having some form of effect on uh, Christendom, which I reckon shouldn't be the case. So I want to understand from your uh, expect position, what you think the church's position should be within this time that there is a restriction on their ability to congregate in fellowship? Well, first of all, COVID-19, as I have stated earlier, had uh, affected Right, I think we're having uh, some uh, severe challenges with Reverend Dr. Cyril Fiosey, but uh, 